Our first subject of automata theory are words and languages. A word is just a finite sequence of symbols from some alphabet, sigma. So sigma, our alphabet, is just a set and the elements of this alphabet we call symbols or letters. We use a, b, c, d and so on to denote symbols from the alphabet and we use u, v, x, y, z, so from the end of the English alphabet to denote words. We write a as element of sigma to say that a is a symbol from the alphabet sigma. We use lambda to denote the empty word. So this is a word consisting of zero letters. It's important to understand that lambda is not a symbol from the alphabet sigma. Lambda denotes a word, not a letter. So in programming languages, words are often called strings. And then lambda is the empty string. So just two quotes, nothing in between. Lambda has length zero. Everything that is stored on a computer can be thought of as a word. It is a sequence of bits of zeros and ones. So in particular, a program can be thought of as a word. And from an abstract point of view, a program takes as input a word and it produces as output a word. So in particular, since programs are words and since the input and output can be thought of as words, we can give a program to itself as input. It may sound confusing at first, but in Linux, for instance, we can do the following. We can call the program cat and give as argument the program cat itself. So this program will print its own code. Let's have a look at some basic operations on words. The first operation is concatenation. So if you are given a word V consisting of letters A1 up to N and the word W consisting of letters B1 up to BM, then the concatenation of V and W denoted by VW consists of the letters A1 up to N followed by B1 up to BM. So for instance, the concatenation of ABB and BA is the word ABBBA. The length of a word is the number of letters in the word. So if V consists of letters A1 up to N, then the length of V is N. The length can be defined inductively on the word. The length of the empty word is zero. And the length of a word VA, where A is a single letter, is the length of V plus one. Plus one is for A. So for instance, the length of the word ABBBA is five. We have one, two, three, four, five letters in the word. The kth power of a word, so V to the power K, is V K times concatenated with itself. Again, this can be defined inductively, V to the power zero is the empty word, lambda. Zero times concatenated with itself gives nothing. And v to the power k plus one is v to the power k concatenated with v. So k times concatenated with itself and once more gives k plus one times concatenated with itself. For instance, if w is aba, then w to, to the power zero is lambda, the empty word w to the power 1 is just w, a, b, a, w to the power 2 is w, w, so a, b, a, a, b, a, w to the power 3 is w three times concatenated with itself, a, b, a, a, b, a, a, b, a. The reverse of a word, a1 up to a, n, is the mirror image of the word, so reading the word from right to left. If we take the reverse of a1 up to an, we get an, an minus 1, down to a1. 
Again, the reverse can be defined inductively. The reverse of the empty word is just the empty word. The reverse of a word VA is the word starting with A followed by the reverse of V. If you reverse this word, then the A gets to the front followed by the reverse of V. For instance, the reverse of the word ABCB is, if you read this from behind, we get BCBA. BCBA. Now let's have a look at languages. A formal language is nothing else than a set of words. So a set of words forms a language in our sense. More precisely, a formal language L is a subset of sigma star for some alphabet sigma. Sigma star is a set of all words that can be formed over the alphabet sigma. So for instance, the set of all possible C programs forms a language. This set consisting of three words is a finite language over the alphabet AB. Languages can also be infinite. For instance, we will denote languages in this form, a b to the n a for n greater or equal 1. So that means it's the set of all words of this form where n is 1, 2, 3, and so on. So for n is 1, we get aba, for n is 2, we get abba, for n is 3, we get abbba, and so on. So this is an infinite language over the alphabet AB. This is another infinite language over the alphabet AB, A to the n, B to the n, for n greater or equal 0. So for n is 0, we get 0 times A and 0 times B, so we get the empty word, we get lambda. If n is 1, we get 1A and 1B, so we get AB. If n is 2, we get AABB. If n is 3, we get AAABBB, and so on. So languages can be finite or they can be infinite. Since a language is a set of words, the usual set operations also have meaning for languages. So in particular, the element relation, the subset relation, the intersection, union, and difference. Let's have a look at some simple examples. The word BA is an element of the language consisting of these three words. BA is in this language. The word AB is not an element of the same language. The language consisting of the words ABA is a subset of the language consisting of three words A, ABA, and BA. A is also in this language. BA is also in this language. Every word of the first set appears in the second set. That's the definition of subset. The language consisting of A and B is not a subset of the language consisting of these three words, because the element B does not appear in the second language. The intersection of these two languages is the language consisting of A and BA. The intersection takes all the elements that are in both of the sets. So A appears in both of the sets, that's why it's in the intersection. Likewise, BA is an element of both of the sets. But neither ABA is an element of both sets, nor AB appears in both sets. Therefore, they are not in the intersection. The union takes all the elements of either of the sets. So A is in the union, ABA is in the union, BA is in the union, A we've had already, AB is in the union, and BA we've had already. So the union of these two sets is the set consisting of these four words. The difference of two sets 
consists of all the elements of the first set that do not appear in the second set. The element A appears in the second set, so it's not in the difference. Likewise, BA appears in the second set. But the element ABA does not appear in the second set. Therefore, ABA is in the difference of these two languages. The complement of a language L is denoted by L over bar. So we write this line over L to indicate the complement of L. The complement of a language L consists of all the words over the alphabet sigma that are not part of L. So we take all the words that are not in L. That's the complement of L. So for instance, if we assume that we have an alphabet with a single letter, just A, and our language consists of the two words A and AAA, then the complement of L consists of all the words except for A and AAA. So it's all the words over A except these two. So how can we denote this? We can denote this as the union of two sets. First, the empty word is not in L, so it should be in the complement. The word AA is not in L, so it should also be in the complement. And then all the words that are longer than three letters, so four times A, five times A, six times A, they are all not in L, so they all should be in the complement. So we can denote the complement of L as the union of the finite language consisting of lambda and AA, with the language consisting of all the words A to the N for N greater or equal 4. We have seen that we can compute the reverse of a word, so we mirror the word, and we can do the same also with entire languages. The reverse of a language L is the reverse of each of the words in the language L. So for instance, if L consists of the words lambda, AB, BB, ABA, then the reverse of L, the reverse of lambda is lambda, the reverse of AB is BA, and the reverse of BB, ABA is ABA, BB. We can concatenate words, but we can also concatenate entire languages. So given languages L1 and L2, we can define the concatenation of L1 and L2 as the set consisting of all the words x, y. So this is the concatenation of x and y, where x is a word from L1 and y is a word from L2. So the concatenation of the two languages consists of all the words that are formed by concatenation, where the first part consists of a word from L1 and the second part is a word from L2. Let's have a look at an example. If L1 is the language consisting of A and BB, and L2 is the language consisting of AB, BA, then if we concatenate L1 with L2, what do we get? We concatenate every word from L1 with every word from L2. So in particular, we concatenate A with AB. This gives A, AB. We concatenate A with BA. This gives A, BA. We concatenate BB with AB. This gives BB, AB. And we concatenate BB with BA, giving BBB, -B -B A. We can use this to also define the power of a language. So the nth power of a language L is defined as follows. The zero power of the language L is the language consisting of the empty word. And this is really important to understand. This is not the empty language. This language consists of a single word, namely the empty word. And the n plus first power of L is the nth power of L concatenated with L. 
Let's have a look at an example. L is our language consisting of A and BB. Then the second power of L is we concatenate every word of L with every word of L. The concatenation of L with itself. So we concatenate A with A, this gives AA. We concatenate A with BB, this gives ABB. We concatenate BB with A, giving BBA. And we concatenate BB with BB, giving BBBB. Now the third power of L is L concatenated with the second power of L. So it's L concatenated with L square. So what do we get? We concatenate A with AA giving AAA. We concatenate A with ABB giving AABB. We concatenate A with BBA giving ABBA. Concatenate A with BBBB giving ABBBB. We concatenate BB with AA giving BBA, BB with ABB, giving BBABB, BB with BBA, giving BBBA, and finally BB with BBBB, giving BBBBB. Now there's a possible caveat here. If you see the language L square, then you might think that this contains only of square words. So that this is only words of the form u, u, where u is a word from L. But this is not the case. L square is more general, as square consists of words u, v, where both u and v are words from L. If you look at the last slide, then you see here that L square does not only consist of square words. So it does not only consist of AA or BBBB. It also consists of words A concatenated with BB and BB concatenated with A. Now that we have defined powers of languages, we can define what is known as Kleene star, L to the power star. This is the union of all the powers of L. It's the union of the zeroth power of L with the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and so on. And there's a variation of it, L to the power plus. That's all the union of non-zero powers of L. So it's L to the power 1, union L to the power 2, union L to the power 3, and so on. So what is the difference between L to the star and L to the plus? L to the star has additionally the language L to the power 0. And we know that L to the power 0 is the language containing just the empty word. So effectively, L to the power star is L to the power plus union, the language containing just the empty word. Now, sometimes L to the power plus already contains the empty word. And this is the case if L contains the empty word. If L contains the empty word, then and only then, L to the power plus will also contain the empty word. So if L contains the empty word, then L to the power plus and L to the power star will be the same. Now let's have a look at the Kleene star of some language. Let's take a language just consisting of two words, A and BB. And now we take L to the power star. So how should I think of this union of all of the powers of L? The best way to think of this is that L to the power star consists of all the words that you can build from the building blocks in L. So you should think of the words in L as basic building blocks and you can use them to build arbitrary words from them. So one thing we can do is we can decide not to use any building block. So we build the empty word, so we get lambda. We can use one building block, so we use just one A, we get A. We use just one BB, we get BB. Or we use the building block A twice, we get AA. We could use building block A and BB, then we get ABB. 
we can use BB and A, we get BBA. We can use building block BB twice, then we get BBBB. And then we can start using building blocks three building blocks. We can use three times A, then we get AAA. Or we use twice A, AA, and one BB, then we get AABB. Or we use an A, then a BB, and then an A again, then we get ABBA, and so on. So we use these A and BB as our basic building blocks, and we can use them as often as we want, zero times, one times, two times, three times, and so on. And we can build arbitrary words, whatever we can build from that gives us the language L star. Now let's do some simple exercise. We are given an alphabet consisting of two letters A and B, and we are given a language L that consists of words of the form A, B to the N for N greater or equal zero. So these words start with an A followed by an arbitrary number of Bs. Now the first task is to describe the reverse of this language as a set. So we have words starting with an A followed by an arbitrary number of Bs. If we take the reverse of these words, we get a word that starts with an arbitrary number of Bs and is ended with an A. So this is quite simple. We can just write B to the N A for N greater equal zero. Now our second task is to describe the complement of the language L. And this is already more tricky because it becomes difficult to express this in set notation. So we will actually express it as a union of three sets. So first of all, all of the words in this language contain an A. So the empty word is not in this language. So it's clear that the empty word should be in the complement of the language. Now what more should we have? Every word in this language starts with an A. So the complement should contain all the words that start with a B. So if you have a word that starts with a B, no matter what follows, this is in the complement. It's not in the language L. So we take the union with the language BW, where W is an arbitrary word. None of these words of this form is in the language L, so they must be in the complement. But now we are still not finished. We are still missing out on some words, namely on those words that start with an A, but then are not of the form B to the N. So if we have an A in the front, but then we have also one more A after this A, then it's not an L. So also words that contain two A's must be in the complement. So how can we describe this? We can describe this as follows. We can say it's words of the form A, W, A, U, where W and U are arbitrary words. So it's a word that starts with an A, and then there's some arbitrary word following that contains at least one A. Then it's not of this form, and so it must be in the complement. And now we are finished. That's not immediately obvious, but after a bit of thinking, you can convince yourself that indeed these cases cover all the cases of words that are not in L. But what's the conclusion of this exercise? The conclusion of this exercise is that describing languages as sets or union of sets in this notation is not ideal. It really becomes difficult to compute with these. So we will look into different ways to describe languages.